promote feminism and all of this. And they have they can do that without conspiracy. That is of a of a human variety, because the, the grandest conspiracy is the fact that Satan himself works a multifaceted front in people's minds through organizations, through leadership that he is allowed to get people into. Sure, it's a high, spiritual high sickness. Yes, it is. But it's and so it, obvious now. And it's not easy to overcome. You know, yes, repentance and returning to Jesus Christ is the answer, but we can't force those things. We can only do that by invitation. And, by, and so that's why the battle is one of dividing society. And that's what I see coming up to this war is more and more society is going to be divided between those that see that there's a conspiracy, that they control both political parties, those that have a, a moral foundation, uh, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of Christian churches are being suborned by becoming mainstream and not being um, and being afraid of being criticized for being extreme and radical. Chuck, Pastor Chuck Baldwin has some marvelous writings about and criticisms about the, the, the mainstream Christian churches and how they're basically getting into the new world order. Without oh, they're, I mean, they're taking government money and literally just spouting whatever the mainstream media says now. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, what's the time frame, do you think, five to ten years till they try this World War III thing? As I say, I don't think it's coming before 2020. Now, as you get closer to that, I mean, you can't hold me to that because they could take an opportunity to move forward. But I think we've still got a good five years to fight this battle. And you're and saying we see North Korea start shelling Seoul, get out of, get out of major cities. That's right. Because that's going to be the trigger event of World War III. There has to be some reason why they treat North Korea with kid gloves, that they don't ever have a military option for taking them down or regime change. They know North Korea is going to be the trigger to start it. We may have to use tactical nuclear weapons to stop that kind of attack, and that will justify China and Russia for initiating a nuclear preemptive strike because we started with tactical nuclear weapons. And they have the PDDs in place where the sub commanders and silo commanders uh, can't fire back, they'll be totally destroyed. That's right. You know, our sub and missile commanders believe that they're going to be given the orders to launch on warning when Russia and China launch against us. But I don't believe those orders are ever going to arrive. And for those that don't know, until the PDDs got changed under Clinton and continued by Bush and Obama, if the missiles are tracking in, they have the authorization to, to defend. Now they've taken that away. That's right. And they have told them in PDD 60, 1997, to prepare to retaliate after absorbing a nuclear first strike that don't depend on. They didn't actually tell them you're not going to be able to launch. They just said, don't depend on it. Structure your system so that you can retaliate after absorbing a nuclear first strike. And General Butch Needle of the Marine Corps said, retaliate with what? He was just incensed. And uh, mm -hmm. and especially since in that same year, Clinton agreed with the Russians that we would keep 50% of our missile submarines in port, either in Kings Bay, Georgia, or Bangor, Washington, to make it easier for the Russians to target them because they were in port. I mean, this is just incredible, Alex. Yep, and meanwhile, the media pushes 24-7 to demonize the Tea Party. That's the big okay. threat, the Homeland Security says. Uh, let's talk to Michael in Oregon. You want to talk about U.S. flags being banned? You're on the air with Joel Skousen. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, Joel, it's a privilege, gentlemen. I, I got to tell you, Joel, what you say, uh, it, it's just, it's overwhelming. I'm sitting here listening. It's overwhelming. Um, I thank you for, you know, the insight that you give us. Uh, my son today and I were talking about the USA flags being banned on T-shirts in California. And my son, who's 12, Connor, he said to me, Dad, that's just stupid. You know, out of the mouth of babes comes wisdom. <laughs> and I thought I would ask you your take on that. I ordered a bunch of shirts, by the way. I'm going to pass them out, you know, nice Texas shirts and USA shirts, but uh, I think it's crazy. What, what do you think about it? Well, California, like New York, is one of those vanguard states of the left, of the globalists, uh, who are testing the waters on everything. They're pushing the envelope and just banning patriotism, banning Americanism, banning American culture, just par for the course for the kind of government that you have in California. You know, as a fellow Oregonian, uh, I'll tell you, I wince 
at the Oregonian newspaper and, you know, the, the liberal elite in Portland and Eugene, I expect them to follow suit pretty soon, too. What California does, Oregon does, you know, a few years later. And they're very proud uh, of their anti maleness I'm seeing in the news now that it's offensive. H heterosexual couples, marriages, now see marriage itself as offensive. This isn't tolerance. This is that we're being conquered by this. It's amazing. All right, thank you, caller. Yeah, who had ever thought American flags banned because the illegals are offended by them? Only in America, the former America. More calls coming up. Ray in Illinois, he says he's a city council member. He wants to know what's next for the USA. Go ahead, Ray. Hi, Alex. Uh, hi, Joel. Uh, I've been a council member here for the past three years, and uh, I actually got involved into doing this because of Alex and people like Alex and George and a few other like-minded people. I want to say thank you for uh, getting me involved, and I just hope that other people will get off the couch and instead of just complaining about what's going on, get involved some way or somehow. But, uh, Joel, my question is, you, you talked about the timetable. What would happen, uh, how significantly would that timetable uh, go forward if an EMP pulse or a solar flare would hit North America like they've been talking about and wiping out our, our grid and our defenses going down? Would China and Russia say, hey, let's do it now instead of waiting? Or what do you think about that? Well, you know, that's a scenario that's been prognosticated by several people. Uh, here's why I don't believe that EMP will ever strike separate from an actual physical nuclear strike. The one thing an EMP doesn't do, and let me just tell you about the technology of an EMP. The latest data from the U.S. government and others is that it takes about six high-altitude nuclear weapons to blanket the whole U.S. to take down the whole grid in a, in, a, in a very serious way, not just one. And so there's been a lot of hype about uh, Iran sending a whole fleet of uh, ships over towards our coast and that they're gonna launch a missile off that. Just not technically very feasible uh, to do that. Uh, it takes more than one missile. And even if it did happen, an EMP strike doesn't take out the military because it's been hardened. And so the military would know where it come, came from. They'd be able to retaliate so it doesn't achieve the, the purposes of either Russia and China or even a, a rogue state, you know, as if Iran would do that, which I don't believe they would. And so... Sure, if they're going to do that, just smuggle a nuke into Manhattan and detonate it. That's right. I mean, if you want to just make a show and get your, your country retaliated against, I mean, if you want to do something suicidal, there are easier ways to do that than to try to do it with a missile on a ship coming into. But I just don't think that's going to happen. It really is more technical than people think to, to throw a high-altitude nuclear weapon up there, and it's got to be... Well, in the 60s, point. the Pentagon detonated big hydrogen bombs in the atmosphere, and it did knock out power, but they found it was sporadic uh, through the atmosphere. That's right. It is sporadic. It takes about six to blanket the whole U.S. And even then, um, as I say, it doesn't take down the, U the military because they're hard. Now, a sun uh, EMP could, be, could actually hit the whole country, the equivalent of a big flare. Why is there so much military industrial complex hype? We get hit by guests constantly wanting to come on about EMP. Well, I don't know. You know, government agents have been hyping a lot of things in and frankly, Alex, anybody who calls up, me included, and says, I'm an insider in government and I have some top secret information for you, I don't take it. Because nobody in today's NSA can get away with talking to anybody on our side without getting caught. And if they can do it week after week, you know it's permitted. It's not that they're really on our side. Sure. They're, they're always giving. What do you think about Snowden? I think Snowden was legit. He doesn't match that same thing. He's told, here's the information, it's out. He's not claiming to be in the inside anymore. He's not claiming to have insider information. And he reads true and legit to me. That's uh, what I think. Do five more minutes, I know you gotta go. I wanna come back and finish up talking about that, that source situation. We'll be right back. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. 
I agree with Joel Skousen that if you're getting real info from the government, <clears throat> even 15 years ago, I would have high-level tech company people, telecom people, and one time somebody connected to the NSA, they would come to a live event where I was speaking, signing books, videos, or at a movie theater or a bookstore, and would walk out, leave something on my car, or hand me something in a rodeo or a car show where I was doing a remote and I was given NSA stuff. I was given documents. I was given stuff about Delta Force in South Texas and then talked to the San Antonio police chief who they tried to bribe. So there are cases where whistleblowers speak out, but usually it's public to the Associated Press. The police chief, after I interviewed him, went public to the Associated Press. Uh, Ali Philippus about the military buying off the city for covert operations and, and, and Thomas Sanchez of Kingsville. I've also been sent stuff by state police. I've been sent stuff by federal marshals, but it comes in unmarked mail, and then later I get a contact about it, and they get hopping mad. I got a call about the missing nukes, and I'm not going to say from who, but it was people that didn't know there were nukes hidden at Dias were freaked out and wanted, got concerned. So there are, but then they never would talk to me after, and I can't say any more to let out who it is, but a big, a big thing happened over that. Enough for me to fear for my life. Um, so I want to be clear, though. There are real whistleblowers, but somebody that constantly says, I'm a government agent here, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, over the phone, over email, that's not real. Because real stuff is when people are not going to be part of evil anymore. They blow the whistle like Snowden at great risk of themselves. Do you agree with yeah. what I just said, Joel? And they get out. That's right. There's no way to stay a whistleblower and not get caught when you're inside government. Well, I mean, I don't want to actually prohibit whistleblowers, but they found out who the state police guy was and then were tried to fire him. He was senior. And I mean, I can say that because people know who it is on the inside. And then he was able to keep his job and basically get put on a desk uh, for sending me that info. Right. By the way, before we go on, I want to congratulate you, Alex, on outlasting Piers Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> You're still here and he's gone. <laughs> Well, not by any work of my own, but by God's good graces. But yeah, Piers Morgan, though, it shows the mindset of the globalists thinking that that would ever be popular. Well, Americans just don't like somebody looking down their nose at them and, uh, and being disgusted with our Second Amendment rights. But see, there's a lot of good stuff happening. I see a lot of people wake, but like you said, it's either people are waking up or they're getting more into the darkness. I, I just don't know. It's going to get crazy. Yeah, there's a great division taking place within our society. And, you know, the one uh, hopeful thing I want to say about my scenario about this war coming in World War III, the great, the hidden blessing of that that comes through any war, even though there's a great deal of horror and terror in war, is that a separation of society happens and the good become better and the worst become worse and a lot of them die. And what's the best thing, though, is that the Lord will drive people out of the major corrupt metropolitan areas. There won't be any jobs left to hold them there. And I think he'll inspire them to relocate to places where they'll have more liberty and then we can reconstitute liberty on a more regional and local basis, even though I don't think we're ever going to win it back on the national scene because of the power of this secret combination of power that we're dealing with. Well, undoubtedly, they are animated by a spirit of evil and deception. Folks can get your fine book and the accompanying film that I produced, Strategic Relocation, at InfoWarsStore.com, and that supports all of our work. Invaluable information for you and your family. Joel, thanks for spending time with us. My pleasure, Alex. You know, I still get people calling me and telling me about that film that you did with me on Strategic Relocation. It's still popular out there. Well, I appreciate you coming and doing it and letting us put it out on the Internet for free as well. It is on YouTube for free. It's a public service. But everybody should have the hard copy DVD on their shelf to show friends and family. Joel, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Strategic Relocation, the book and the film, both go together like a horse and carriage. Infowarsstore.com. Great job with the crew. And everybody, we had uh, Tucker Carlson on agreeing with me, so a lot of folks are waking up. That was interesting today. God bless.